Welcome to Tally Help videos. In this video, you will understand how to use GSTR1 report for various return related activities. With Tally Prime, you can move a voucher to a different return period if you do not want to file the return with the voucher or you want to include the voucher in a different return period. There may be scenarios in which you may need to modify or delete vouchers after exporting those to file returns. In Tally Prime Release 3.0, you can easily identify vouchers of a specific return period that are modified or deleted after exporting. If you have already uploaded the vouchers on the GST portal, then such a facility helps you to identify the vouchers that need to be re-uploaded on the portal with revised values. You will also get to understand how to sign returns in Tally Prime so that the values get freezed for the period. You may also have to amend vouchers from a signed return to a different return period. Tally Prime facilitates simple amendment of vouchers so that you can include the vouchers in a subsequent return period as needed. First, let's see how to move a voucher to a different return period. Open GSTR1. Press Alt plus G. Type or select GSTR1. And press Enter. With the all new feature of setting the new return effective date, moving vouchers to a different return period has become simple. As you record a voucher, it starts appearing in the specific period of GSTR1 as per the effective date. Consider that you do not want to include the voucher in the return as you want to include it in a subsequent period. Just drill down to the section, press spacebar to select the voucher and press Alt plus L or click set effective date. Consequently, the voucher will start appearing in the GSTR one of the period based on the effective date. As you can see, this voucher has started appearing in the B2B section when you open GSTR1 for the period. Now, let us see how to handle transactions that need to be deleted after export. Consider that you exported a JSON file containing vouchers from a particular return period. Now, you are deleting one of the vouchers. Just drill down to the section. Select the voucher and press Alt plus T to delete it. The voucher moves to the marked for deletion on portal section. As you can see, the voucher is deleted before signing. Press Alt plus E and export the voucher to submit delete request on the GST portal. The voucher is denoted with the text delete against it. You can then export the transaction and upload the JSON file with delete request. Now consider that you had to modify a voucher after export. Just open the voucher. Make changes and press Ctrl plus A to save. As a result, the voucher moves to the Modified in Books after Export section of GSTR1. Thereafter, press Alt plus E and you can see that the voucher is highlighted with the GST status Modified in Books after Export. You can export the JSON file of the voucher. Tally Prime ensures that when you export the JSON file with modifications at the time of re-uploading, only the modified values get updated for the voucher on the portal. Now, let us see how to sign return using GSTR1 and undo signing whenever needed. 
as a supplier of goods or services, you must be filing returns on the GST portal for a specific period as followed in your business practices. Once you file returns on the GST portal, you can sign the return in Tally Prime. Signing a return in Tally Prime freezes values of all the transactions included in the return. As a result, you will not be able to modify transactions that are included in the filed return. For instance, let's open GSTR1 for a specific period. Press Alt plus G. Type or select GSTR1. And press Enter. To change the period, press F2. Enter the from and to dates and press Enter. Now, say you have filed the return for this period. You can mark it as signed in Tally Prime. Press F10 or click Mark as signed. Now, if you want to mark the previous returns as signed along with this, then you can press C or click Mark Current and Previous Returns as signed. This option helps when you might have forgotten to mark previous returns as signed. Now, press S or click Mark Current Return as Signed. If there are any transactions in the Uncertain Transactions, Corrections Needed or Ready for Export section, then a message appears to inform you about the same. If you want to correct and export those transactions before signing, then you can do so. Press Y to continue signing. The return is marked as signed and the values such as amount and tax amount get freezed for the return period. You can see the status as signed. Now, consider that you had signed this return accidentally. In such cases, press Alt plus F10 or click the arrow against mark as signed and click undo signing. Press S to undo signing of the return. The status got changed to not signed. Now, let us see how to amend vouchers in a return that is marked as signed. Press F2 and open GSTR1 with the period for which return is marked as signed. Now, consider that one of the vouchers needs to be amended with some modifications in the values. Drill down to the respective section of the transaction CB2B invoices. Drill down further to the party. Identify the voucher and drill down to it. Make the changes and press Ctrl plus E to save. As a result, the voucher moves to the uncertain transactions, corrections needed section of GSTR1. Drill down to the section. Press spacebar to select the voucher and press Alt plus L or click Set Effective Date. Enter the new return effective date as per the period to which you want to amend the voucher. You can select multiple vouchers if needed. Press Escape and you will observe that a section named Amendments marked for future returns has got created. Drill down and you can see the transactions. And when you open GSTR1 for the period to which you have amended the voucher, you will find the voucher in the amended P2B invoices 9A section. Now, consider that you want to delete a voucher included in a signed return as the business deal is cancelled by the counterparty or other such reasons. Let's open GSTR1 for the period of signed return. Drill down to the respective section of the transaction that you want to delete CB2B invoices. Drill down further to the party. Select the voucher and press Alt plus T to delete. Press Escape and drill down to Marked for Deletion on Portal. Now, you need to amend this voucher to zero in the subsequent period. So, select the deleted voucher and press Alt plus L or click Set Effective Date. Enter the date and press Ctrl plus E to save. Now, the voucher moves to the non-accounting transactions included in return section. 
based on the effective date provided by you the voucher moves to the respective period under the amended P2B invoices 9E as amended with 0 As you saw, you can do all the return related activities such as signing return, moving a voucher to a different return period. You can amend the vouchers after signing so that you can include those in the future return period. And if you have modified or deleted vouchers after exporting, then Tally Prime ensures that you can identify such vouchers and export with delete request or modifications as needed. Thank you. To know more about Tally Prime features, visit help.tallysolutions.com. Subscribe to the Tally Solutions channel for the latest videos.